felt a comforting warmth rising from the, from the name as if the famous wit was trying to reach out and touch her. Some say she still haunts this room, Mr. Beeman said. I believe she does, Martin thought. In fact, there was a powerful force emanating from the signature, and the longer Violet held her hand there, the stronger it got until her fingers prickled with the strangest sensation, tingling and hot like she was touching a sparkler. She wanted to pull her hand away, but she willed herself to be straight, take a chance, see what happens next, and then, the strange heat moved up her arms and shot through her body with so much force she had to grab onto the table. What is it, Carl said. What's wrong? He reached over and touched her cheek. You're ice cold. No, she thought. I'm burning up. But she let go of the table and touched her own face and realized he was right. She was red hot and ice cold at the same time. Then she was swept up by a terrible wave as the two forces seemed to beat and clash, resulting in a nausea so overwhelming Violet thought she must surely be dying. It continued to build until she could no longer endure it and the light began to disappear from her world. Thank God, she thought, thank God I'm fainting. At last she passed out, carried off in beautiful, blessed unconsciousness. Still, even in her blackness, she heard the voices of the men around her. Are you okay? Ms. Epps, are you all right? Maybe we should call an ambulance. Violet, wake up! No, no, she thought. Leave me alone. Let me stay in this faraway place. And then, another voice spoke to her. A woman's voice. Don't be a coward. It's your moment. Violet <laughs> opened her eyes at the sickness and pressed itself into a tiny tight ball right behind her navel. She looked around the room and it was as if the light had changed in a way that altered her focus. Everything was crisper, like she had just put on stronger glasses. She 